Welcome to my tutorial series on modules. Today I will cover time module. Python time module provides various time related variables and functions. But not its all functions and variables are available on all platforms. Most of the functions and variables defined in time module call C library function with same name. In this tutorial I will cover only these functions and variables. These functions and variables of time module are not part of this tutorial. Because these functions and variables are rarely used in everyday programming and most of them are only available on Unix like systems. I will make another tutorial on these functions and variables because they require some extra knowledge of Unix like systems and clocks. So before we get started we need few things to understand. They are GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, Time Zones, UTC, Universal Time Coordinated, Epoch, CPU Time, Wall Clock Time and Struct Time defined in Time Module. Let's start first with Greenwich Mean Time and Time Zones. All places along the same line of longitude have noon at same time. That's why they are called meridians. The time on prime meridian, that is 0 degree, which passes through Greenwich in London, is known as Greenwich Mean Time or GMT. The Eastern Hemisphere on the right hand side of the prime meridian has positive prime meridian time. And the Western Hemisphere, which is on the left hand side, has negative prime meridian time. As we all know that Earth rotates from west to east and it's approximately 15 degrees per hour. So if it's 12 noon in Greenwich, then the difference in the time at 15 degree east or west will be plus minus 1 hour. So Earth is divided into different time zones. Each time zone is 15 degree of longitude wide. But today we have more than 24 time zones because some of the time zones are only 30 or 45 minutes apart. Now what is UTC? UTC stands for Universal Time Coordinated and it's nearly same as GMT when fractions of a second are not important. UTC uses an atomic clock to maintain accuracy and it also takes care of irregularities of our circular motion compared to GMT. Whereas GMT is determined by sun position in the sky relative to the zero degree longitudinal meridian. Unlike GMT, UTC is not a time zone. And today UTC is used as reference by which the local time in each time zone is set. So the local time on your computer is calculated by taking UTC time, adding an offset that is based on time zone and then optionally adjusting the offset for daylight saving time. Now what is daylight saving time? For energy saving reasons many countries have daylight saving time. The clocks are forwarded one hour in the spring and decremented by one hour in autumn to make the days look longer in the winter. In fact, they only change the time zone and the UTC time will always be the same. Now what is epoch? On computers, time is measured as number of seconds since the epoch. And on Unix like system, it is the midnight of January 1st 1970, where the time was 0 seconds. Since then, the clocks on Unix Linux systems are ticking. If you call time function, which we will cover later in this tutorial, it will not give you the time in UTC format, but number of seconds elapsed since the epoch. Now what are CPU time, system CPU time and wall clock time. CPU time also called user CPU time or execution time is the amount of time the CPU worked on the program excluding other overheads. System CPU time is the amount of time the process worked on operating systems functions connected to that specific program. Whereas wall clock time also called elapsed or running time is the total time to execute a program on a particular computer. It includes the user CPU time, system CPU time and time needed for any other operations like assessing memory and even sleep time. The time module in Python also defines struct time for holding date and time. Many functions like GM time and local time return a struct time object also called time tuple, which is a tuple of 9 integers. The 9 integers are year, month, month day, hour, minute, second, weekday, year day, and daytime saving flag, which can be 1 if daytime saving time is in effect, 0 if not, and minus 1 if it's not known. Now let's start with variables provided by time module. Time zone name is a tuple containing name of local time zone and name of local daylight saving time zone, if defined. In my example, my local time zone is Central European time 
and daylight saving time zone is central european summer time time zone variable gives a difference in seconds between utc and local standard time because i have central european time so my time zone variable is set to minus 3600 which is 1 hour the next variable returns a difference between utc and local time inclusive daylight saving time the result may be different on your system because it depends on both time zone and country in which you are living Daylight variable is set to non-zero value if daylight saving time zone has been defined on your system. Now let's start with functions provided by time module. The time function returns number of seconds since the epoch as floating point number. So if you pass the value returned by time function as an argument in other functions like C time function, you get date and time in UTC format. Time function can be used to find out how much time a part of your program took. You can record the time at the beginning and then at the end and compare the values as shown in this example. This is not the precise way to measure the time taken by a program. Time module provides other functions like process time function for this purpose. Sleep function takes an integer or a floating point number as argument and puts the current process to sleep for the given number of seconds. In this example, I print string hello and then I put my program to sleep for 2 seconds. And then I print string by to end the program. The process time function returns system and user CPU time of current process. It doesn't include time elapsed during sleep. According to Python documentation, the reference point of return value is undefined. So that only difference between result of consecutive calls is valid. In this example, I am calling process time function at the start of my program and then at the end of my program. In last line of my program, I am taking the difference between both start and end values to get the user CPU and system time, which is also called program time. The next function preference counter is very similar to the time process function on the left, but it uses highest available resolution timer available on the system. Compared to process time function, which measures user CPU and system time, preference counter measures the wall clock time, which can be impacted by many different factors such as machine load. Again, the reference point of the return value is undefined, so that only the difference between the results of consecutive calls is valid. So I have taken same old example I am calling preference counter function at the start and at the end of my program, and also print the difference between both values. If you look at the output, you can see preference counter function also includes the sleep time. Another function which can be used to measure time is monotonic function. This function returns the value in fractional seconds of a monotonic clock, that is the clock that cannot go backwards. Monotonic clocks is not affected by system clock updates like NTP protocol. Again, the reference point of return value is undefined so that only the difference between the results of consecutive calls is valid, as shown in this example. I have taken same old example from my last slide, and I am calling monotonic function at the start and at the end of my program. And then I print the difference between both values. You can use the getClockInfo function to query about each of the following functions we have covered so far. The function returns namespace object having following attributes. Adjustable, it is true if the clock can be changed automatically or manually. Implementation, it is the name of underlying C function used to get the clock value. Monotonic, it is true if clock can go backward. And resolution, it is the resolution of the clock in seconds. GMT function takes an optional argument which must be a valid epoch value and it converts it into time triple expressing UTC time. If no argument is given, GMT time function returns the current UTC time. You can also extract a single value of a time tuple by using index, as shown in this example. The local time function is just like GM time function, but it converts the argument into a time tuple expressing local time. When you call ASC time function without any argument, it returns 24 characters long string object expressing local time as shown in this example. If the argument is given, it must be of type time tuple and ASC time function converts it into a readable 24 characters long string object. 
Similarly, it can also have GM time function as an argument because GM time function returns a time tuple object. The C time function is very similar to ASC time function, but it takes a valid epoch value as an argument. And like ASC time function, it also returns 24 characters long string object expressing local time. Called without an argument, it returns local time. This is the inverse function of local time and it takes exactly one argument that is a time tuple and converts it into seconds since the epoch. String format time function converts a time tuple to a string according to the format specification. When the time tuple is not present, current time returned by local time function is used as second argument. So the second argument of type tuple is optional. In this example, I am printing the actual date and time using format codes. For all format codes, you can read the official Python documentation on Python website. In this example, I haven't given the second argument. So string format time function uses the current local time as second argument. In my next example, I am passing gm time function which returns time tuple object as second argument. In next line, I am passing my own time tuple which I have declared above as second argument. So in a nutshell, string format function converts the time tuple which is second argument to a string according to the format specification. String pass function is very similar to string format function, but it passes the string representing time into a time tuple according to format specification. Let's see an example. In this example, I'm calling ctime function which returns a string object which represent current date and time. In my next line, I call string pass time function without format arguments. And if you look at the output, string pass function has converted the string object into time tuple. In my next example, I have passed my own custom string object as an argument with the respective format codes. If string cannot be passed according to the format or if it has access data after parsing, value error is raised. I hope you have now basic understanding of time module. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.